Hello there and welcome to my channel. I'm Christian and you're watching A Dev Story. Today we will talk a little bit about object-oriented programming. Object orientation is a paradigm that is loved by many, but it's also hated by many. Ultimately, it's one of the top skills required in software development positions, and most popular programming languages also support some degree of object orientation. So let's look a little bit into what is object orientation. Traditionally, programming languages can be divided in different uh, models of computation or paradigms, and these paradigms include the imperative, functional, and logical models. We will talk about functional and logical in other videos, and they are basically also subcategorized in what is called declarative models. In those models, basically, you tell the computer more about what you want instead of how you want to implement it. Opposed to this is in the imperative model. So in the imperative model, you uh, basically program setting up a set of commands or statements to change the program state in order to get into the result that you want. And so in that sense, it can be seen more into focusing on the how. Inside the imperative model, you will see two, two approaches. One of these approaches is uh, the procedural uh, approach, and the other one is object orientation. So we can summarize broadly the difference between them in the relationship that they have between data and functions. So in the procedural model, the, the data can be separated from the functions, while in the object orientation, they, they are try to be together, and we will see later why. So one fun fact is that most hardware is implemented following the imperative model. Before we dive in into the specific principles of object orientation, let's talk a little bit about the naming conventions. First, we have the class. Basically, the class is the definition or a template for other instances, and it ties together the data and the methods or functions associated with it. Of course, depending on the relationship of this class with other templates or classes, uh, they, they could have also superclasses or subclasses, depending if you uh, inherit from another superclass or if another class inherits from your class, that would be a subclass. Then we get to objects or instances. Basically, objects or instances are specific examples of a class. For example, if you had a car and you have a specific instance that it could be your car, then that is, is the same type, but it's a different, it's, it's a specific example or instantiation of a class type. Then we have relationships. Basically, relationships can be of two types, uh, inheritance or instantiation. Instead of inheritance, it's also called is a relationship. Basically, if you extend another class or an object, you will get uh, an object that is very similar to the super object or the super class that you're extending. For example, if you have a class vehicle and you extend it as a car, you have a is a relationship because a car is for sure a vehicle. But then you also have other types of relationships like instantiation, where you will use an instance of another class in, in, your, in your object as well. For example, if a car or a vehicle has wheels, Right? So that's also called a has a relationship because you are not part of that object, but you can use it. And now let's dive in into the core concepts of object orientation. Basically, there are four concepts. Encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, and polymorphism. Encapsulation basically is tying the data and the methods together. And that way you can restrict or enforce certain rules on, on your object. For example, let's say, let's say we have a class called doc, and this doc has a name, color, and energy, depending if it's tied or not, and then some methods associated with it, like fly, eat, walk, or sleep. This is an example of encapsulation because all the data and methods associated with the data are together in the same class. Then we get to abstraction. Basically, abstraction is the notion of having a concept or idea that is not associated with a specific instance. So you could have a class of a doc, but it doesn't have to be a specific doc, you know? Then all the docs that you implement could be similar in the class or in the type that they have. Then we have inheritance. Inheritance is basically sharing common traits between similar objects. In, in the doc example, we could extend from an animal class and that animal class will have some methods that are common to all animals, for example, like eat or sleep. And then you can implement your doc class, extending this class uh, with the methods that you need. And you can reuse that code that was part of animal. Finally, we get to polymorphism. Polymorphism literally means many shapes. So you can mix different type of objects under the same umbrella. 
it's in, in this case, for example, let's say we want to have a list of birds, then you could have a class birds where you could uh, have different subclasses like uh, uh, dog, pigeon, or swan. And then you can group them all together because they share common traits uh, into, into the same list. That's basically what uh, polymorphism is. And that's it. Those are the basics of object-oriented programming. Of course, this is a very in-depth topic and I just tried to summarize it very quickly in this short video, but I will put some links in the description in case you want to, to learn more about it. And of course, if you think I missed something or you want to learn more, please uh, drop me a comment below. I will also be publishing some videos with related topics uh, like uh, solid principles and design patterns that will allow you to understand a bit more uh, in practice how object-oriented programming uh, works and how to do it better when you're implementing uh, some solutions in your, in your code. Without further ado, that's it. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, don't forget to like the video if it was interesting for you, uh, subscribe, share it, and of course uh, drop me any comments if you have questions or you want to know more about things. Uh, thank you very much. See you next time.